Hi, and thanks for joining us. I'm Mark Christie, and I'm Director of Technical Services here at Store Magic. Now, we at Store Magic have always prided ourselves on delivering high availability, focused at the edge, all about the leanest server footprint possible to be able to make that as cost effective, as set and forget, and then as scalable as possible. So from tens to hundreds or even thousands of remote sites. Now this is typically focused at just a pair of server nodes. Now that enables that lowest cost of entry point while still eliminating any single point of failure. We are occasionally seeing some deeper requirements in that Certain use cases require the ability to maintain high availability even when a node is down for maintenance or in the event of a server failure. Now, SVSAN always offers one-to-one -one synchronous mirroring, network grade one, if you will. Now, a three node architecture with that setup can still be extremely powerful. What we're doing with this is essentially building enough capacity into each of those systems to accommodate the entirety of the storage set. Effectively, when we're in that three node merit architecture, we have spare capacity in each of those systems. What's going on is we have this three node, all of the quorum, the arbitration of those mirrors, if you will, is handled by the opposite node of those mirrors. So the mirror between node A and B the quorum then provided by node C. What this removes is any reliance on that WAN connectivity. We effectively have a three node on-prem quorum solution. Now, other solutions on the market today, in order to maintain HA when a node is down, typically require four, maybe even five nodes. And that is all because of the quorum piece, the witness, the arbitration of those systems. When one node is down, everything's okay, but as soon as you lose a second, you have lost more than 50%. You've lost your majority, so the environment is offline. The way that StoreMagic does this is to essentially change from that three-node on-prem architecture that I was just describing. When we lose a node, we actually modify that to a two-node centralized witness architecture. Throughout this failure scenario, those VMs are up and running in that cluster, in that highly available environment. And effectively, if one of those nodes is then taken down to do a, an ESXi upgrade, hypervisor update, firmware update, any piece of the puzzle effectively, we can then take that system down. And if it's going to be for an extended period, rebalance those mirrors. Effectively, what we're doing is to remove the mirrors or re remove the sides of the mirror from the failed node and re-mirror to the two surviving pairs. Now what that does, as well as obviously rebalance the storage, is also switch to that centralized shared witness that I've mentioned, and then takes all of the pressure off of getting that replacement server out there. With that change in architecture, we could then tolerate a further node failure, and even then losing connectivity to that witness as well, and everything still be up and running on that last surviving node. So this becomes a really powerful means of getting an environment protected again and taking the pressure off so that you can then replace that server node further down the line. So I'd actually like to demonstrate this with some live systems. What we have are three Lenovo SR630s with a virtual machine running on each of these hosts. VM3 on host 3, VM2 on host 2 and so on. We have our three storage appliances and each of them sitting on that SVSAN presented shared storage. So for our first server failure, we'll go onto the XCC and we can hard reset this server. That server being hard powered off, what we'll notice within our SVSAN interfaces is that these mirrors out to that node will get marked first orange synchronized and as soon as there is an IO change on that mirror to an unsynchronized data store. So as we still have our two nodes up, our mirror between one and two is all still highly available. However, the other two data stores are not. Our guest VM, we come back to our summary, will currently be going through a HA failover to the other two surviving hosts. We'll just wait for that to come back up and then we'll rebalance our mirrors. Okay, with our VM now up and running on host one, what we now want to do is, as I say, to change from that three node on-prem quorum solution to our two node and centralized witness. 
So what we can effectively do is to remove the sides of the mirror to that failed node and then resynchronize them between those two surviving VSAs, those two surviving systems. So what we'll now see in our interface are those mirrors rebalancing, remirroring between those two systems. Now our VM's up and running on hosts one and two. What we'll now do is fail host two once we're synchronized, just to demonstrate that we're resilient. Now what we'll notice if we dig into these guys is rather than their witness, their quorum, being pointing at the other VSAs, is that actually been changed to utilize the centralized witness. In my case, running on the vCenter. With our rebalance of those mirrors completed, and each of them switched to utilize that centralized witness, what we can now do is fail host two in exactly the same manner. So three, currently offline, two, now offline, and our guest VM on here, going through that same HA failover over to our last surviving node in the system. Now once more, if we come over to our web interface, we'll notice that these mirrors, now in that unsynchronized state, node two failed and offline, but all of our storage still presented from our last surviving node in the system. With that HA failover complete, we now have all of our VMs running on our last server node. We've lost host three, rebalanced the storage, lost host two, and everything's still up and running. Two nodes failed, still up and running and still protected. Now what I quite like about Stormagic's architecture is that actually in this scenario, we can even now lose contact to our witness and continue to run. And what we'll notice is that each of these appliances now having lost contact to this, obviously throughout all of these different failures, alerting the admin team, raising those alerts through our syslog, through SNMP, through email notifications that each of these failures has happened, but everything's still online and up and running on this last surviving host. So just to reiterate, we've gone through a three node, lose a server node, rebalance that mirror, change to that centralized witness. We've lost a second server node. Again, failed over, everything up and running on a surviving system. And we've even then lost contact to the witness piece within this architecture as well. Three nodes down and still online. Shows quite exactly how resilient this is. We start our witness piece up. And we can then bring up our failed hosts. Once these guys are then back online, we'll do a quick resync of just the changes over to node two. And actually when node three comes back, we can rebalance those mirrors. Again, removing our reliance on that WAN, switching from that two node plus witness to that three node on-prem architecture. So as I say, really powerful three node architecture, maintain high availability, rebalance the mirrors in a short period of time, and actually then you're able to tolerate multiple node failures in that cluster. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and please do like and subscribe, and if you want further information, by all means drop us an email to support at stormagic.com, and we'd love to assist.